Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. In this video we give you some general tips and tricks on caring for ficus plants. And we will also give you our personal favorites in the ficus family. Now, one of the biggest families of plants that we use for indoors is the ficus family. There are a ton of different varieties, different shapes and forms, but there are some general tips concerning the entire family that we have to start addressing. And first of all, all ficuses likes to have a bright placement. The brighter placement you can give your ficus plant, the better. And also, the brighter you place them, the more it will grow, because the entire family actually grows quite quickly. Now, most plants of the ficus family wants to have high temperatures inside of your house. What I mean by that is that you should never let the temperature go below 16 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit. But you should also not have above 29 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit because then you can get problems in that way as well. Low humidity can also be a problem for most plants of the ficus family. If you have low heat, and here in Sweden it's usually in wintertime when we have that low heat and very, very dry warmth inside of our homes. What happens is that the ficus just starts to lose the leaves. They just drop them straight off. They're green, they look healthy, but they just start to fall off. This is a humidity problem. Now, if that happens, you need to find a way to raise the humidity inside of your home. Most ficus plants also drink a lot of water. Now, that doesn't mean that they like to stand in water, and it doesn't mean that the roots likes to be moist all the time. What it means is that it drinks a lot of water. It needs a lot of water to be able to push it out to all of those leaves within the ficus plant. So what you do when you water a ficus plant is that you water it quite often, but you make sure that the top soil, one or two inches, depending on the size of the pot, dries out in between that watering. And if you notice that some of the leaves are starting to get yellow or yellowish, usually the oldest leaves are starting to get yellow, it means that it's not getting enough water. Never give it more water at the same time. Just increase the frequency of how often you water. Make sure that that top soil dries out in between, but water it a little bit more often. Always repot your ficus plant when you see that there is a lot of roots coming out of the drainage holes. Because our recommendation is to use an inside pot that has drainage holes so that you never ever get your plant standing in water so that the excess water can go out. But when you see that a lot of the roots are starting to come out of those holes, it's time to repot because None of the ficus plants actually likes to be root bound. So when you get a lot of roots in that pot, it will start to react and not feel well. So make a repot, but also know that most ficus plants actually can react to a repot as well. But don't be alarmed if that happens. What can, what can happen when you repot is that it can lose some leaves. It can also look very droopy and sad for a little bit and then it will start to race again. No worries, this is perfectly normal. Just treat it the way you have before the repot and it will bounce back and it will thrive again. The ficus family grows very, very fast. This is one of the reasons that you can get a hold of large ficus plants for very low cost and it's because the growers can actually grow them quite fast. And if they grow fast in your home as well, that usually means that you need to add fertilizer on a regular basis. However, never give fertilizer when the plant is dormant. 
Ficus plants get, usually get dormant in winter time and in the high midst of summer. And in those two cases, we do not fertilize. We fertilize when the plant is active, which means springtime and autumn usually. Now, if you start to get problems with your ficus plants, it usually means you have a pest problem. Because if you make sure that you water only when the topsoil is starting to dry out, you give it a lot of indirect sunlight, usually it's very happy. And you fertilize on a regular, regular basis. But if it starts to look unhappy, it's probably a pest problem. And what usually attacks the ficus family is mealybugs, scale, and spider mites. Now, on the upside of that is that those three are quite easy to handle. Just go out and buy a pesticide that are specialized for those type of bugs and follow the instructions to the letter and you will have a happy plant again. So moving on to our favorite ficus varieties of 2021. And these are the three types that we almost exclusively use. Uh, in our line of work. So first of all, we have a personal favorite of mine, and that is the Ficus lurata, also known as the fiddle leaf fig, which I have here next to me. And you know that it is the Ficus lurata because of these massive leaves. They are huge. And the name actually comes from the leaves looking like a violin. So Ficus lurata. Uh, and the, I love this plant because it has a massive presence. If you put this in a room, it is the first thing that your eyes will go to in that room. You cannot try and make this plant just blend in. It has a massive, huge presence. So if that is what you're looking for, this is the ficus plant for you. Now we have an all you need to know video on the ficus lurata. So if you want to know more on how to care for it and which problems you can get with this, just go and watch that video. However, if you get this plant to root properly in its, in its pot and when it starts to enjoy the placement that you have given it, it is extremely easy to care for. As long as you don't move it, as long as you don't repot it, it just stands there and it starts to grow. And then it's really easy to care for. This is one of the ficuses that very, very rarely gets any pests. Usually it gets something that people think is pests, but it's not. Because of these extremely huge, massive leaves, this plant drinks quite a lot of water and it needs a lot of water to be able to push it out to these massive leaves. Now what can happen when it starts to grow is that it can get something called edema. Now edema means that you will, on the leaves here, you will actually see that you get almost reddish dots on the new leaves. And this is the edema. What happens here is that it pushes up that massive amount of water and those new small leaves can't handle that water pressure. And some of, the, um, some of the cells here actually get hurt by that. And that is what we see here. But it's not a problem because as the leaves start to get bigger, that edema just goes away. So a lot of people think that, oh my God, my ficus lurata has a pest problem. No, it probably has edema and it will take care of that problem by itself. Now, one of the biggest problem with this plant is that if you're not treating it right, if it starts to feel bad and it loses some of these massive leaves here, it is unforgiving because it will just have big holes in the plant and it will not look good. And those leaves will not be replaced. So you just have a big hole until you might eventually get a new branch at that point, but don't count on it. So this is a plant you need to take extra care of because if you fail, it will show you and then it will just look bad for a long, long period of time. 
So moving on to our second favorite ficus plant, and that is the ficus elastica robusta. And we have that one here. Now, this has also a very massive presence, as the lirota we talk, just talked about, but in a quite different way. And these big leaves as well, they have this very strong look to them. And it's because they are very, very thick and they have this extremely thick cuticle. Now the cuticle is this waxy surface on top of the leaves here. And it is very, very prominent. It's the first thing you see when you look at this plant. Another thing we love about this plant is also that on the underside of the leaves here, you can see that this really thick middle vein here on the leaf is very, very prominent. And it also has a different color to it. So it makes the f whole appearance of this plant to have something is happening that is drawing your eyes to this plant. Now the ficus elastica is a little bit easier to care for than the lirota. And the reason for this is because they have an extremely similar way of taking care of them, but the elastica is a little bit more forgiving. You have more leaves, uh, and if you lose some of those leaves, it's not a big problem. And also, this branches out much more easier than the lirota. If you prune the uh, elastica, what happens is that it will start to branch out and you can get this very dense, nice, bushy looking ficus plant. That will not happen as often on the lirota. We have also noticed that the elastica here, it can be placed a little bit darker. What I mean by that is that, is that it doesn't need to have full indirect sunlight. You can place it a little bit deeper into the room without having any problems. It is also our experience that it will handle colder temperatures, which means that it's not pruned to get damages by drafts from your windows, for instance. So it is a little bit more forgiving in that way. If your elastica starts to get yellow leaves, and usually it's the oldest leaves way down uh, closer to the thickest stems. If the older leaves start to get yellow, that means that you haven't watered it enough. What I mean by that is that you should increase the frequency of how often you water this plant. It drinks quite a lot of water, but it doesn't want to stand in water. And if it's showing you by yellow leaves, then increase the frequency of how often you water. Now the last of our three favorites of the ficus family is this one here. And this is the ficus siestapula, also known as the African fig. Now this has a very different appearance from the other two that we've mentioned this, in this video, because the, this one has these very, very dark leaves. It still has big leaves, but it gives a completely different appearance. This is a ficus that blends in in the background. When you put this in a corner of a room, it just adds a calm, and it just blends in the background of that room. On the opposite of when you have a lirota that is just pulling your eyes to it, this is a more calm and relaxing feeling. This is also one of the ficus varieties that can withstand quite dark placements. What I mean by that is, this is not a CC plant. You cannot place this in the middle of a room where it gets almost no light. But in the case of the ficus family, this is probably the one that can handle the darkest placement. So if you know that you want to have a ficus plant and that you need to place it a couple of meters, a couple of yards into the room, and this is the ficus plant for you because it will survive and thrive there. What happens though is that the darker the placement, the less it grows. 
So also know that, that even if the ficus family grows quite fast, if you don't give it enough light, it will slow down the growth of the plant. So you might want to buy a plant that has the size you want immediately, instead of buying a smaller one that will grow into the size you want. This is also a ficus plant that very rarely gets pests. When it gets pests, if it gets pests, it's usually spider mites. And it will show you that on the newest leaves, they will start to look a little bit faded and sad. Because the spider mites attack the newest leaves first. That is the delicacy of the plant. Then it spreads to the entire plant. So always, always look at the newest leaves and make sure that they look healthy. If they start to look sad, you could have a spider mite problem. Because spider mites are so, so small that you can't even see them with your eye. You can see them when they start doing their webs, when they start creating their small spider webs. That's why they're called spider mites. But when that happens, there are a lot of them. So by just being very, very conscious about the newest leaves, you can actually prevent that. And you can go out and buy a pesticide and take care of the problem before it gets to be a problem on the entire plant. Now, one last thing, make sure that you keep rotating your Cistapula, your African fig. What I mean by that is that if you have it standing next to a window, it gets a lot of indirect sunlight. Make sure to start rotating it at least once a month. It could be every week, but at least once a month. Because our experience is that all of the leaves will start to turn towards the light. And if you keep it that way, it will start to lose the leaves that are on the back side of that plant. So if you want to have it and keep it this dense, this full, make sure to rotate your plant often and it will stay this way. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps this channel a lot. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do. Hit the bell as well so you get a notification every time we put up something new. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram where you can get sneak previews on upcoming videos and sometimes a little bit more. Now until next time, hi do.